Hello and welcome to an overview of the results from the spinach trial conducted as a part of the Vancouver Island Winter Vegetable Variety Trial. My name is Raylani. I'm a research assistant with the Sustainable Agricultural Landscapes Lab and helped to manage this project. I want to respectfully acknowledge that this project uh, took place on the unceded and sovereign territories of Indigenous territories within the colonial borders of British Columbia. This project was conducted as a collaboration between the Sustainable Agricultural Landscapes Lab and eight vegetable farms on Vancouver Island. These vegetable farms spanned five regions from the Victoria Langford area to the south to the Comox Valley uh, to the north. This trial took place over two seasons. It began in June of 2021 and wrapped up in December of 2022. We had two objectives, two primary objectives to this project. The first was to build capacity for grower participatory variety trials on Vancouver Island, and then also to conduct a variety trial and share the results with other growers and interested parties. We selected two crops with grower input for this trial, and they were spinach and chicory. For each crop type, we selected seven varieties with assistance from seed companies and previously conducted variety trials to focus on winter harvest varieties. And we chose eight traits to evaluate each of these varieties on that reflected these project goals. This was a mother-daughter trial design, so we had one trial site where there were three replicates of every variety on one farm. On the seven other sites, there was one plot of each variety on each farm. Each plot was eight feet long by one bed, fit, bed width wide. The plots were labeled in the field with flags or stakes, and then paper maps were created to keep track of variety location. Management decisions outside of variety type and seed and harvest timing were left up to the individual producers. So things like irrigation, fertilization, and cultivation were all choices made on a farm by farm basis. We direct seeded the spinach at one to two in row inch spacing. And that was done between August 17th and September 2nd of 2022. The varieties we selected were Acadia, Auroch, Gazelle, Matador, Space, Winter Bloomsdale, and Winter Giant. The traits that we selected were germination, seedling vigor, bolt resistance, disease resistance, winter hardiness, flavor, marketability, and yield. Each of these traits was evaluated on a one to five scale, except for yield, which we measured by weighing crop biomass at the time of harvest. Bolt resistance, disease resistance, and winter hardiness were evaluated two to three times throughout the trial period every two weeks, beginning in about mid-October through harvest in late November or early December. To standardize the ratings across farms, a rubric was used that uh, outlined the trait and an approximation of what a one would look like and what a five would look like. The evaluations were conducted by the growers on every farm. They assigned a rating to each variety and they also collected photos and other qualitative commentary as the crops were growing. All of this data was collected through Seedlinked, which is an online variety trial platform. And then this data was analyzed collectively by the Sustainable Agricultural Landscapes Lab team. As I noted, yield was measured at the time of harvest. And we took a subsample of each plot that was one meter long by one bed weight width wide uh, for each variety and we weighed this and we harvested only saleable leaves so this is a marketable yield calculation. So now to talk about some of these results. First up is yield so we measured 
um, in kilograms per bed meter. So this is the amount of saleable leaves in a one meter quadrat that was one bed width wide, uh, assuming there were three rows per bed. So Auroch had certainly the highest yield, uh, followed by Matador. Auroch was a fairly strong performer in this trial overall, whereas Matador actually was not, despite its high yields. And then Space Gazelle and Acadia all had kind of comparable yields in the middle, and then Winter Giant and Win Winter Bloomsdale had the lowest yields. These are the cumulative average ratings for each variety. So we took the simple mean of every evaluation of every trait to get kind of a broad overview of how these um, varieties performed. And the rest of this presentation is organized by variety. Um, and I'll talk about the highest performing variety first, all the way through the lowest performing variety. So here we can see that Acadia, Gazelle, and Space were the top three varieties, with Auroch coming in a close fourth. So Acadia was rated highest overall. 80% of the growers in this trial said that they would grow this variety again. It was ranked the highest in bolt resistance, winter hardiness, germination, and flavor. So this is a hybrid variety. It was bred to be kind of slow growing and for small leaves for baby leaf production, which is part of what contributed to its lower yield. The leaves themselves were nicely shaped, pretty standard, thick, a deep green, um, glossy, and definitely on the smaller side. Pest damage was minimal with this variety and kind of a, a good to average winter hardiness. Uh, this variety tolerated light frosts with no problem um, and then experienced some kind of yellowing of outer and older leaves and harder frosts. Gazelle was rated second highest um, overall and then ranked highest in marketability. 100% of the growers said they would grow this particular variety again. Gazelle was really similar to space in its appearance and performance. This variety was bred to be resistant to downy mildews and for baby leaf production in the fall and winter seasons. The leaves themselves were oval shapes and mostly smooth with a little bit of texture, a small to average size, and a, a vibrant deep green. This uh, variety, Gazelle, did really well in terms of pest resistance. It had perhaps the most saleable leaves compared with other varieties when we looked at um, insect holes and um, any other damage due to pests or disease. And similar to Acadia, this variety did quite well in light frost, and then some of the outer leaves started to yellow uh, in the harder frost that we experienced in mid to late November. Coming in third in this trial was space. 80% of the growers would grow this again. And again, this was quite similar in appearance and performance to Gazelle. The leaves of space were a bit bigger than gazelle. They were kind of average to large and um, a, mostly smooth with some texture. And again, this kind of deep, vibrant green. And did very well in terms of pest resistance and disease resistance. And then survived similarly to the previous two varieties quite well in the light frost and then just had some kind of yellowing around the leaf edges in uh, harder frosts. This variety, kind of the key difference between space and gazelle was that space was less cold hardy than gazelle, but had a higher yield. So that was the observed trade-off between these varieties by the growers. Auroch ranked fourth highest. 60% of the growers said they would grow this variety again. It was bred to be fast growing, and that was certainly observed in this trial. The leaves were quite large. 
um, and it's also reported to be resistant to downy mildew. The leaves were quite large, mostly smooth with some texture and a really deep green. The leaves were kind of uniquely shaped. They're more of an arrow shape or a pointed leaf than some of the previous varieties. There was some pest damage in this variety, but certainly a lot of saleable leaves at the time of harvest. And the in terms of winter hardiness, this variety had yellowing and definitely discoloration after a few hard frosts, but it did seem to continue to grow in cold weather. The fifth highest rated overall was Matador. 40% of the growers said they would grow this particular variety again. It's bred to be a fast growing variety, resistant to downy mildews and to be grown in, in tunnels and the winter season. The leaves themselves were a yellow green, certainly a lighter green than all of the other varieties we've seen so far. <clears throat> the leaves were pretty large and mostly smooth, and they had an oval shape that went to kind of a semi-point. Matador was really similar to Winter Giant in its appearance, just with a more oval-shaped leaf. This variety held up reasonably well to pests, um, although there was quite a few unharvestable leaves. However, there's still quite a high yield in this variety, in part because of the large size of each individual leaf. This variety didn't do particularly well in the cold and wet conditions. It was one of the first varieties to go quite yellow in um, saturated soils. There was a lot of standing water and in fairly cold temperatures. Winter Bloomsdale was the lowest rated overall. 20% of growers said they would grow this variety again. It's spread for winter or for fall and um, over winter production. Um, this is an open pollinated variety. The leaves themselves are quite small and very savoid, both of which the growers cited as reasons they wouldn't grow this again. The yield was really small and um, they felt that the Savoy was harder to wash and also less marketable. This variety also had a fairly open habit. It's kind of laid against the ground, um, which made some of the leaves kind of rot and color, discolor more easily uh, before the time of harvest. The um, This variety was fairly uh, resistant kind of to a lot of pest damage or a lot of disease damage, but certainly some leaves were unsaleable at the time of harvest because of large insect holes. And again, withstood some, withstood some light frost, but had a harder time in the really heavy frost. Tied for the lowest overall rating is Winter Giant. 20% of growers would grow this again. It was bred for fall and winter field and tunnel production. These leaves, similar to Matador, were this kind of yellow green, quite large and semi-pointed. They also were fairly thin. There was moderate pest damage in Winter Giant. It certainly impacted the yield and the, the yellowing of a lot of the outer leaves, which you can kind of see in this photo here, also impacted the yield. And the yellowing came after um, really saturated soils or quite cold temperatures. If you are interested in the full trial results, you can contact me at this email address or you can visit the Sustainable Agricultural Landscapes Lab website. Many thanks to all of the collaborating farmers and project team and particularly to our funders.